Hi, and welcome to this clip on how to work out the mass or and abundance of a missing isotope from mass spectral data. This is a more applied use of the normal and relative atomic mass calculation. So here's an example of that type of question. It says, example of xenon has um, a relative atomic mass of 131.31. So normally that's the value you'd have to work out. This time, they give me the data and they've taken a piece of the data out. So one of the isotopes, this data is missing. So they want you to calculate the abundance of the isotope and calculate the mass number M. M is that number next to it. Normally there'd be a number like these. These are the mass numbers of these isotopes. So they want you to work out this mass number and the missing percentage. So the first thing to do is to write out the equation for working out relative atomic mass, as you've done and learned either from textbook or flashcard. And then you can insert the values that you already know from the question. So obviously the isotopic mass is these numbers and the abundance is these numbers. So what this means here is sigma, this, that stands for sum of. So you multiply the isotopic mass times its abundance, so 129 times 28. You do the same for all the others, so that's what I've done. And in red, I've uh, highlighted an unknown value x. So that's obviously going to be um, one of the isotopic mass times abundance um, uh, expressions, isn't it? So it's going to be part of the, the, the overall equation. It's going to be a term that's missing. So to work out the, the, the abundance or percentage of this isotope, obviously all of the abundances will add up to 100. So you subtract the ones that you know from 100, and leaves you with 20 which you can see at the bottom, that's quite straightforward. The next part is maybe a little bit more applied. That's calculating the mass of the, that particular isotope. So let's call it 20m. Let's turn x into 20m. Why is it 20? Because we've already worked out that the um, abundance is 20. So 20 times the mass is what we're trying to get. Now we need to simplify this a little bit. So to make that uh, expression a bit more straightforward. Let's collect the like terms, which we did to make 10,451, and multiply through both sides by 100. It gives you um, 20m, if you make it the subject, and equals 100, uh, sorry, 13,131 minus 10,451. But uh, it's obviously 20m, so you divide that by 20, and that gives you 20, uh, 134. So the mass number m that we're looking for. So let's look at a typical exam question. This is from the June 2014 paper that asks you to do this type of calculation. So it gives you a sample of antimony and it gives you its A or value. And uh, it says it was found to consist of 60% of 121 antimony. Now it says determine the mass number of the other isotope. So the other isotope suggests there's only two isotopes in total. So that means there's only two um, uh, terms for uh, abundance times isotopic mass. So therefore, the two terms are in the numerator of the expression on the top there. So 60 times 121, you already know. 121.8 is given in the question. Um, now, 40, where did that come from? Well, the two percentages will add up to 100, won't they? So obviously if 60 is one of the percentages, then 40 is going to be the other. So it's quite straightforward. You need to get rid of 100, the same way we did before, and solve for x. So that gives us 123.0. I'm writing it as 0, .0 because that's the decimal uh, places, the number of decimal places uh, in the OCR periodic table. So there's your mark scheme. You can see that they're quite flexible about the way you calculate it, so long as 123 is the answer that you give. Okay, thanks for listening. Until next time, see you soon.